of the richness of the Word of God. Welcome once more. I'm Jen Harvey from The Bible Says International Ministries, where we proclaim the whole counsel of God. If you've been blessed by Choice Radio, invite others to join so they too can partake of the bread of life. They can eat, live, and become spiritually strong. For the Great Commission commands us to go forth and make believers. How do we do that? We do that by sending the word. Let us send the word to others by sharing the ministry information. You can call me, call Jen Harvey at 1-844-99-BIBLE. That is 1-844-99-BIBLE or 1-844-992-4253. Call for prayers, call for a word of encouragement, or just call to inform us how the ministry of the Hour of Power has been a blessing to your life. Before we begin, just let's go before the Lord with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, O God, for your faithfulness, because you have sworn by none other than yourself. We thank you because you continue to bless us, not because of, but in spite of. We thank you, Lord God, because you are a faithful God. Father, we lift up your name this afternoon, this evening, just to say thank you for your goodness, just to say thank you because you have blessed us, just to say thank you because you have edged us about, just to say thank you because you have prospered the works of our hands. Just to say thank you because we still remain in the land of the living, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit, because you have said it, Lord God, because you keep a watch on your word to ensure that it shall certainly come to pass. Spirit of the living God, we're asking you to touch hearts and touch mind. As your word go forth, O God, we're asking you to use your word to do what eyes haven't seen, to do what ears haven't heard, to do what has never even entered into our own hearts. And we will be careful to give you the praise. Holy Spirit, we're asking you to go forth with might and with power. We're asking you to break the bondage of and the yoke of wickedness. We're asking you to lift the burdens. We're asking you to set captives free this afternoon. Father, we are asking that your word will go forth and have free course. We come against everything and anything that want to hinder your word. And we bind and we rebuke it in the mighty name of Jesus. We command every power to be subject to the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, shake what needs to be shaken. Holy Ghost, uproot what needs to be uprooted. Holy Ghost, confirm what needs to be confirmed. Holy Ghost, affirm those who need to be affirmed. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, Holy Ghost, convict those who need to be convicted. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We ask all of this in the name of he who laid down in the grave. And on the third day he rose again. And now he's seated at the right hand of God. He who is King of Kings and Lord of Lord. He who is Jesus Christ, Son of of the living God. Amen. Now the year is rapidly coming to a close. Many of us have not realized many of our dreams, many of our goals, many of our aspirations, many of our desires, etc., etc. But the fact that you and I are still in the land of the living and you're under the sound of my voice, it is a clear indicator that the Lord has not finished his work in you or through you and around you. So today we will be praying, but before we do, we're going to go through some scriptures and we're going to use it. We're going to go through a passage of scripture rather, and we're going to use it to pray. So if you have your Bibles with you, open to the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 through 10. That is the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1. verses Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 through 10 open your Bibles Joshua chapter 1 verses 1 through 10 now 
Here begins the reading of God's holy word. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Verse 9. Have I not commanded thee, Be strong, and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan, to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. Now we're going to look at this passage. We're just going to examine a few of the verses. And it is going to be a source of encouragement to those who are under the sound of my voice in one way or the other. As the year comes to a close, I want you to listen to what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to his people. Verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. I want you to realize that Moses was very dear to Joshua. Joshua served him. They were together. Moses was his leader, his guide. Now, there might be some things in your life that was very close to you, that was very dear to you, that was very precious to you. Things you thought you would not be able to live without. Could it be that your finances are dead? Could it be that friends or loved ones, whether by choice, circumstances, or death, they have departed? But verse 2 will encourage you. Listen to verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Moses may be dead, but you are still alive. That your friends may be dead. Your family members may have left or they are dead. Your finances may be dead or dying. Likewise, your health. It might have departed or is departing. Your husband or your wife might have left, but God is still with you. He has given you the command to arise. He says, arise and cross over. He wants you to cross over into 2017. He 
could not have given you the command unless he knew that you possess the wherewithal to carry it out. So he's saying, arise. He's saying, Moses is dead. There's a time and season for everything on this earth. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. There's a time to mourn. And there's a time of laughter. So God is saying, you might have been sitting in ashes and sack cloth. But I'm telling you to arise. I'm telling you that Moses' season is over. Moses had to die, so you must come forth. God has a specific season and time for everything. Moses' time was over. This was the time of Joshua. But Joshua was sad. But God says, arise. He says, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I am trying to tell somebody that it doesn't matter what your circumstances look like. It doesn't matter what is going on with you. You must speak to your soul. You must ask it, soul, soul, why are thou cast down? You must speak to your soul. You must tell your soul to arise. Remember, walk in the stead of David. David had gone out to war and when he and his men returned, the enemy had invaded their camp. He had, the enemy had taken their children, their wives, their possession, and the men wanted to kill David. But the Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. Am I speaking to someone today who needs to encourage themselves in the Lord? You may not have the prayer warrior. You may not have your pastor or your bishop, but know this, that you have three others with you. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost and you have your soul so speak to that soul and tell the soul to line up his will with the word of God speak to that soul and encourage that soul tell the soul the things that God has told you remind the soul that your heads are never tail you're first and never last you're blessed in the city and blessed in the field you're blessed above all people everything you lay your hands on will prosper remind your soul that the number of your days that the Lord has given you. You shall see them. You shall see them in health. Speak those things that are not as though they are. You have creative ability in your words. You were born and shaped and fashioned in the image and the likeness of Jesus Christ. Arise. Arise. And speak to yourself. Encourage yourself. Decree and declare those things that you cannot yet see. But those things that you desire to see speak to them your Moses may be dead your Moses may be dying but Jesus is with you the Holy Spirit is your paraclete he will never leave you nor will he forsake you this is what the Lord told Joshua in Joshua chapter 3 in Joshua chapter 1 verses 3 he says every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon that I have given unto you as I said unto Moses Moses is dead but the promises of God are alive they are yea and amen for God is not a man that he should lie neither is he the son of man that he ought to change his mind has he spoken and shall he not make it good sure your husband is gone your health is failing your daughter may be acting the fool and your son may be a prodigal but the promises of God they're still in your life and on your life or God what he has said he shall surely bring it to pass but I want to clean that up because I find that Christians we Christians tend to be lazy and we sit in a corner fasting and praying the Bible says that faith without works is dead. If you want to see a man who has real faith, that man has much work. So God's word will not fall to the ground. If what God promised you, you have no part in it. You don't have to work in concert with God. It shall surely come to pass. But if what God promises you, you have a role to play in it. If you do not play your part, if you do not get up and do your work, it shall not come to pass. Listen to Jen Harvey. I know the pastors tell you all this and that uh, to hype you up on Sunday. If God says it is going to happen, no, 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 no. Not necessarily so. If God says it and you have to work in concert with God and you do not do your part, it shall not come to pass. 
But if God says it and you don't have a role to play in it and he says, I am going to do this all by myself and I'm going to do this divinely, it shall surely come to pass. God told Joshua, every place the sole of your foot tread upon, you must take it as a possession. God told him, and he is the only person who would decide how far his foot would tread. I want you to hear Jen Harvey. God did not give him a limitation. God did not set parameters. He gave him a whole region. He says, from this region to this region, from the Lebanon to the sea. He says, but everywhere the sole of your foot tread upon, how far will you go? How much work will you do to possess that which God has given you? He has given it to you, but you must go and possess it. Now I want you to pay particular attention because our feet, he says, everywhere the sole of your foot tread upon, our feet is indicative of our lifestyle. Our feet is indicative of our walk with God. So if you want to possess something, you watch your foot. You watch your lifestyle. You watch your walk. Because we are quick to blame others and the devil for misfortune. Yes, Jen Harvey said, you're quick to blame the devil. Now I want, the Bible says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Every bad thing, every challenge in your life, every situation that you don't want to be happening is not necessarily of the devil because we make choices. We make choices and we will yield the fruits thereof. If you make a poor choice, you may have a poor outcome. How are you going to blame the devil for the choice you made? Remember when Jesus was being tempted, the devil couldn't push him down. He says, turn these stones into bread. He said, bow down and worship me. But he, he says, cast yourself off. But he couldn't make Jesus bow down. He couldn't make Jesus turn the stones into bread. And he certainly couldn't make Jesus jump off and live vicariously or live carelessly. He ask him to do it. So when you and I make poor choices and we yield poor outcomes, we ought not to blame the devil. Number two, I know most Christians don't want to do to hear this, but Jen Harvey promised the Lord she's going to declare the whole counsel of God. Whether I am preaching against my own life or my flesh, or I'm preaching out there against others, God is more important, God is more interested in the condition of your soul and where it will end up than your comfort. So don't touch that dial because you shall know the truth and it is the truth that you know that will make you free. When Jesus was about to be tempted into the wilderness, it says the spirit of the Lord drove him. It wasn't his flesh that drove him in a barren dry hard place. It wasn't the devil that drove him in the wilderness but it is the spirit of God that drove him into the wilderness. God will drive you God will drive I into the wilderness to be tested, to be tried. He will put you in the fire. He will put me in the fire because he wants us to come out as pure gold, purified, tried so he can use us. Every hard place in your life is not caused by the devil, nor is it always caused by yourself, nor is it always caused by God. Sometimes it is caused by God because God wants to spare you. He doesn't want you to die. God says he has no delight in the death of a sinner. So stop blaming the devil and stop blaming everyone around you for your circumstances. Let me tell you th this thing and believe me, it is gospel. The enemy Satan loves when you blame him for things that he didn't do. Let me tell you why. As long as you continue to blame Satan, as long as you continue to blame others, and you do not take responsibility for your actions, you will not change. And Satan loves when we remain in sin. He loves when we remain 
downtrodden. He loves when we remain as outcast and depressed. Unless you say to yourself, what is it that I do? What was my part in this? Why I am reaping these results? And sometimes it is not what you do because we're always looking at what we do. Sometimes it's what we fail to do. Verse 5. There shall not a man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. How would you know that God was with Moses? In essence, God is telling you, remember, remember, remember. Look back, look back, look back. Remember, remember, remember. Look back, look back, look back. That's why oftentimes we Christians are so saddened. We are so depressed because we have forgotten. We have forgotten how God has moved in time past on our behalf. We have forgotten how God has delivered us. We have forgotten how God has picked us up. We have forgotten how God has comforted us. We have forgotten how God has provided for us. We have forgotten how God has protected us. We have forgotten. So God says, as I was with Moses, how would Joshua know how God was with Moses? He had to reflect. He had to look back. He had to remember. So I'm asking you today, have you forgotten? Have you forgotten how God has delivered you? Have you forgotten how God has protected you? Have you forgotten? Forgotten how God has provided for you. Have you forgotten? Brethren, have you forgotten? Sister, have you forgotten? My dear pastor, have you forgotten? Oh, little boy and little girl, have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Remember, remember, remember. Remember the goodness of the Lord. Remember. He says, I as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. He says, No man, no man, whether that man be human or whether it be a situation or whether it be a circumstance we don't know what it is but God says no man that means no devil that means no demon that means no sickness that means no Goliath it means no hurdle it says it shall not stand before you when something comes in front of you it is there to block you it is there to stop you it is there to edge you in but God says no man no man no man no man no man shall be able to stand before you or the days of your life. So if you can't go around it, go through it. The Lord says no man, no man shall be able to stand before you as he was with Moses. So he is with you. No man will be able to withstand you, God is saying. No man, no man, no thing, no Goliath, no devil, no demon, no disease. It will not be able to stop you. Verse 6, be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide an inheritance, the land, which I swear unto the fathers to give them. Did you hear what God just said? He says, unto this people you shall divide it. So God is saying, Joshua, you are victorious. You have not yet seen it, but because I am Alpha and Omega, halabashante. he says, because I am Alpha and Omega, because nothing is hidden from my eyes, I'm telling you that you are victorious because you will divide the land. When God says in his word that your heads are never tail, when he says that you are victorious, if we will only believe, 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 the Bible says that the just, the just shall live by faith. But God says, be strong. He understands our frailty. He understands our humanity. So in this passage of scripture that I've just read to you, this is the first admonishment of courage. God is aware. God is aware of our proclivity to fear and to be discouraged. But let me remind you, to possess many of God's promises, we must be courageous. He gave him a promise. Not only gave him a promise, but and it's a covenanted promise, but he also told him, you will divide the land as an inheritance. So he's saying, Joshua, you have already you are already victorious because I am declaring I God, your God, your Yahweh, I am declaring the end from the beginning. You haven't started it yet, but I have seen it. And he says, be of good courage. 
Many of the things that God has said we will accomplish, many of the things that God has said we will possess, it takes courage. Why does it take courage? Because you have naysayers on your left. You have naysayers on your right. You have a Goliath that is standing in front of you. But the Lord is telling me today to come and tell you to be courageous. We must take a page out of David's book and ask, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Whatever that Philistine may be, may it be discouragement, may it be distraction, may it be doubt, may it be despair, may it be depression, may it be debt, may it be disease. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter who it is. The Lord is commanding you to be strong. He's commanding you to be of good courage. He says be of good courage. Verse 7, he says it again. Only be thou strong and be and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest again God encourages his servant to be brave again God encourages his servant to be brave now I want you to pay particular attention if you have not gotten anything since the evening started please don't miss this your life depends upon it your success depends upon it your progress depends upon it your peace depends upon it your prosperity depends upon it your eternity depends upon it. Here is where many of God's people fall short. They want to prosper, but they don't want to obey. It doesn't work like that. You want to prosper, but you don't want to obey. God told him not to turn from the left or to turn from the right. He says that what the laws that Moses laid down if you want to be prosperous don't turn away from it he says hearken unto it the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken better than the fat of ram. Do you see Christians who will spend two hours praying? They will fast for a whole month from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., but they won't obey. They think their fasting and their prayer is going to bring the blessings that obedience ought to bring. Uh, 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 uh. God is not moved by your fasting because if you're fasting and you're not obeying, all you're doing is you're dieting. And if you're praying and you're not obeying, as long as you're not praying for grace to obey and grace for God to kill your flesh and grace for God to create in you a clean heart, you are fooling yourself. For obedience is better than sacrifice and to hearken better than the fat of ram. Verse 8, this he comes again to tell you how to have good success. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. All oh, but the heathens are prosperous, pros prosperity. We're talking about prosperity God's way. And I'm not saying God doesn't want you to prosper financially. He does. For the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. The gold is his and the civil, silver belongs to him. He will show tender mercies to whom he chooses to show tender mercies to. You have not because you ask not. So God wants us to prosper. He says, Beloved, above all things I wish that thou will prosper and be in health. So so I know that the the teaching of poverty is not of God. It takes money to for the gospel to go forth. It takes money for people to missionaries to fly to other parts of the country and the world. It takes money to buy Bibles to, to give to other peoples uh, of different parts of the world. It take Bibles, it takes money to send food to the poor and to clothe the naked, to feed the hungry, to visit those who are locked up in prison. God says when he comes, he's going to ask, when I was hungry, did you feed me?
When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was a prisoner, when I was locked up, did you come to visit? So it takes money to do all these things. So when you hear people talk about you don't need money as a Christian, money is an instrument. It is a mighty instrument of exchange. But it is not God's way if money becomes your God. Money should not be an idol. Money is an instrument. Money is a servant. S-E-R-V-A-N-T. It ought not be your master. I'm going to repeat that. Money is a servant. It's an instrument, a mighty instrument of exchange. It is a servant. It ought not be your master. So if you want to have good success, and that includes the financial, that includes the spiritual, that includes relationship, that includes your your work, your vocation, your education, good success is success God's way and it includes everything in our life every facet of our life God doesn't want us to be spiritually strong and be financially emaciated he doesn't desire that the psalmist says I have been young and now I'm old yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread So many times, and I know sometimes we go through seasons of hardship, but I often look at Christians, especially in America, I'm not talking about other parts of the world where the political and economic regime is so contaminated and tainted and and, 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 and just the politics have overtaken the place. Corruption is, is, is preeminent that people lack. But I'm talking in this America, in this New York, that you see Christians continuously and perpetually don't have food. I think something is wrong. I'm not being judgmental, but something has to be wrong. The basic in New York City, when you see Christians repeatedly, I know we go through seasons of hardship, but when you see a Christian perpetually in the East, in New York, that cannot find food, I I, I, I'm, I'm, I wonder, what is going on? What is going on? So God says, if you want to prosper and you want to enjoy good success, he says, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Now, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So whatever is coming out of your mouth was first laid in your heart. So God is saying, you must hide the word of God in your heart. The Bible commands us to study. I know Christians, we read But God didn't tell us to read the word. He says to study. He says, study to show thyself approved of God. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The book of Timothy. The Bible says right here, you must meditate. Right here we just read meditate. Meditation is pensive contemplation. It is purposeful and passionate. Pointed study. It is purposeful, it is passionate, and is pointed. The Bible tells you if you want to prosper, he says day and night. That means you, you, do you have a Bible day and night in front of you? No, we go to work, we drive, but your Bible is supposed to be in your heart. I'm going to ask you this question. If the physical book were taken from you, how much of it have you laid in your heart that you will continue to feed on the word, that you will be able to encourage yourself, that you will be able to minister not only to yourself and your loved ones and your family, but you will still be able able to minister to others because you have laid some of God's word in your heart. That is the only way we will not sin against God. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Verse 9. Have I not commanded thee? God is saying again, Joshua, I know you're afraid, but I have commanded you. Commands, listen, Commands are not optional for obedience. 
When God commands you to do something, it's an instruction. He's telling you to do it. There is no option here when God commands you. He says, Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Look at the kind God we have. The creator of the universe, he keeps saying, be, be courageous. I'm with you. As I was with Moses, he uses a parallel. He uses a comparison. So will I be with you? Why did he use Moses? Because Joshua has never seen God be with him, Joshua, as a leader. Because he was never a leader. Moses was the leader. Moses got the instruction. But he's saying, look, look back. Remember, remember, remember. Remember how faithful I have been when Moses was the leader. That same faithfulness, that same commitment that I had with Moses, I have it with you, Joshua. He says, Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Is there any place that you and I can go that God doesn't go, that God doesn't see, that God doesn't know? If you're a Christian, you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit, so everything you do, you make him a part of it. If you're committing adultery, he's right there with you. Ask anyone who knows the scripture you can't leave the holy spirit if you're a, a, a christian the holy spirit will leave you Acts samson the holy spirit left so quietly the bible says samson wist not that the spirit had left him so whatever you and i partake in we are actually inviting and bringing the holy spirit along with us god says i will never leave thee nor forsake thee he says i am going to be with thee whithersoever thou goest so again god encourages joshua to be strong and be courageous he told him not to be afraid joshua i know i know i know it's a lot you have never walked this path before you have never led these people before but know this joshua that you're not alone now here is what i love in verses 10 and 11 then joshua commanded the officers of the people saying pass through the host and command the people saying prepare your victuals for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land. They had to cross Jordan. F folks, if you want to get in Canaan, you're going to have to go through some tough waters. You may have to go through a desert, a dry place. But to get to Canaan land, to get to Canaan, the land that is filled with milk and honey, you're going to have to pass through Jordan. You're going to have to go through the Red Sea. But remember, the God who prepared Canaan is also the God who made Jordan. The God who separated and divided the Red Sea is the same God that is going to get you across Jordan. So I said earlier, many of the blessings that God has for us, we have to fight. We have to fight. We have to work. We have to war. And we have to walk with God. We have to walk with God. We have to work. And we have to war. For the Bible says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffereth violent violence and the violent take it by force but when God was through with Joshua God by his Holy Spirit had encouraged Joshua and Joshua gave his men the command he says go through the people and tell them in three days he gave them a specific number he says in three days in three days in three days within three days you shall pass over the Jordan he didn't say he didn't tarry when God give you a command brethren get up and move on it if you don't, the enemy will steal it out of your heart. If you don't, your flesh will not want to do it. You've got to get up immediately. Immediately and do what God told you to do. And Joshua did that. He gave a command to his officers. God gave him a command. Now he gave the command to 
his officers. He says, tell the people, get their food ready, get their victuals ready, because within three days, within three days, within three days, not only do I want you to speak to your circumstances, not only do I want you to speak to your situation, not only do I want you to speak to your soul, but we have a God of specificity. He says, three days. He gave it a time limit. Decree those things, and if it doesn't happen in the time limit that you gave it, give it another time limit but don't give up continue to decree over your life so we are going to pray because the year is coming to an end and God wants his people to cross over but there are some things that we are going to leave behind because we are going to cross through the Red Sea we are going to go through Jordan because we are going to get into Canaan land a land that is filled with milk and honey what does milk and honey represent milk and honey represents a place the, the, the Canaan land represent a place of provision not only provision that was limited but it was an abundance of provision the land was rich with natural resources the land was rich in soil it was rich with fruits and crops it was rich with animals everything that they needed to settle was in that land your Canaan land is rich with with health. Your Canaan land is rich with peace. Your Canaan land was rich with relationship, with a good marriage, with a good church. It is your Canaan land. What is it you want your Canaan land to look like? You have got to work with the Holy Spirit to create it. So we are going to pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, you said we shall know the truth and it is the truth that we know that will make us free. So Father God, right now oh God you told me to tell my your people to cross over and oh God we are going to cross over into 2017 so God I come against the spirit that has been let out of untimely death I come against the spirit of death I come against it with the name of Jesus I come against it with the blood of Jesus I come against it with the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost I bind up every arrow that the enemy has sent out against your people every arrow of of untimely death I come against it oh God every arrow of disease I come against it depression doubt debt I come against poverty in the mighty name of Jesus I come against despair I bind it up in the mighty name of Jesus every arrow every arrow every arrow that the enemy has sent out against us I command every arrow to return to sender I command it to return to backfire I command it to backfire with shame I command it to backfire, O oh God, with open shame and disgrace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, you says no man shall be able to stand before us. I come against every Goliath. I decree you uncircumcised Philistine, wherever, whatever you may be. Who are you? In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, we take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we cut off the head of every Goliath right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh, Father, I speak. I speak to your people right now. I speak to their souls. I command their souls to hear the Word of God. I command their downtrodden souls to receive life. I speak to every dry bone. I speak to every dry bone in their lives dry bone hear the word of the living God dry bone live dry bone live dry bones live I call forth every Lazarus Lazarus come forth in the mighty name of Jesus every dead thing in your life that is not of God the servant of the Lord command it to receive the resurrection power of Jesus Christ the same power the power of the Holy Ghost that raised Jesus us up out of the grave. Oh, Spirit of the living God, visit those dead or dying things in the life of your people and raise them up. Raise them up in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, that you will give your people strength. Strength, oh God, to pursue. Strength, oh God, to possess. Strength, oh God, to tarry on, to go forth, oh God, through every Jordan in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord God, I'm asking you, oh God, to touch their hearts, touch their minds, touch their life in the mighty name of Jesus. Do what only you can do, oh God.
Father, you know their situations. You know their circumstances. Father, you know the cries of their heart. You know the prayers they have prayed. You know the unanswered prayers that are still yet to come. Those who you those that you have denied because oh God, it is ungodly prayers or it is not a part of their your plan for their lives may you give them the grace oh god to shun to shun every appearance of evil may you give them the grace oh god to believe you the bible says let god be true and every man a liar so father lord god give us the grace as your people to get into the word of god to get the word of god into us oh father lord god to meditate on it day and night oh god to hide it in our hearts so we may not sin against you oh god to feed upon your word so we can become spiritually fat, spiritually strong. In the mighty name of Jesus, you said, Lord God, all the days of our life, not a man shall stand before us. Father, I'm asking you to build a wall of fire around us. I'm asking you to make our lives too hot for the enemy to touch. I'm asking you, oh God, to give us understanding. You says we have not because we ask not. You said in all our getting we should get understanding, get wisdom, and we must not forget understanding. Father, you are the God that change it not. Oh God, Jabez prayed to you. He says, Oh God, that your hands will be upon me. Oh God, that you will en large my coast. Oh God, that you will extend my borders. Oh Father, that you will cause me not to cause pain to others and none will cause pain to me. Father, the Bible said that you heeded his prayers and you answered it, you heeded it, and you gave him accordingly, because his prayers were according to your will. So, Father, I'm praying right now, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, uh, that you will extend the borders of those under the sound of my voice, uh, that you will en enlarge their coast. Uh, oh, Father, that your hands will be upon them. Uh, oh, Father, we're asking you for a blessing, uh, but we do not want the blessing over the blessor. May your hands be upon us. Uh, may your hands of guidance be upon us. May your hands of protection be upon us. Oh, Father, may your hands of absolute control. Oh, Father, we surrender, oh God. Father, many of us, Sunday after Sunday, we sing songs, we give ourselves away. And we surrender for an hour and a half while the sermon is being taught. But as we step out of the pews, oh God, and we step through the edifice called the church building, Father, Lord God, we are back rulers and lords of our lives. Oh God, we're asking you to give Give us the grace to submit. We're asking you to give us the grace to surrender. In the mighty name of Jesus. We're asking you, O God, to give us the grace, O God, that not only we will see you as king, but we will see you as Lord. Provide a protector. Deliver, O God, mighty warrior. O Father, you are our battle axe. We're asking you to get ready your bow and get ready your arrow. We're asking you to break through on our behalf, O God. Every stubborn problem, evil carry over in the mighty name of Jesus. Year after year, year after year, the same evil carry over. Generation after generation, we come against every generational curse. We come against it, O God. We repent of the sins of our forefathers. And we ask you to visit us in the mighty name of Jesus. We ask you to deliver us from generational curses. Oh God, that we are innocent of. But oh God, that our forefathers laid the foundation and it may be affecting us even unto today. Oh Father, arise. Oh God, arise in your infinite mercy. Oh Father, we are asking you, oh God, to blot out our sins or transgression for your sake. Remember them no more. We are asking you to take coals off of your altar. We are asking you to purge our hearts, oh God, so our words can be right. Oh, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. In the mighty name of Jesus, uh, oh, Father, use us. Uh, we're asking you to prepare us and use us. Uh, oh, God, we are not our own, oh, Lord. Uh, we are bought and paid for with a mighty price, uh, the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, so, Father, purge us, wash us, cleanse us, sanctify us, oh, God. We are servants. We are bond slaves in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, Lord God, the songwriter says, uh, pass me not, oh, gentle Savior. Father, 2017, we might not have answered. 2016, we might not have answered the call, oh God, to our assignments, but we are asking you, Lord God, to start the work right now.
now to start the work today, oh God, that 2017 will be markedly different, will be a sharp contrast, oh God, of the lives we lived in 2016, that we will be sold out, that we will be fervent, that we will be on fire for God. We don't wish to be lukewarm. Oh God, at least you spew us out in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Father, arise, oh God, and let our enemies be scattered, enemies after our souls, enemies after our destiny. Oh God, because the thief cometh, he comes only to kill, to steal, and destroy. But right now you said, oh God, that if the thief be caught, he must restore sevenfold unto us. So Satan, everything that you have bound, we loose it by the name of Jesus. We loose it by the blood of Jesus. Everything that you have stolen, our Lord God, I go right now into the enemy's camp, and I retrieve it for your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we retrieve our people. We retrieve, oh God, our families. We will retrieve our health. We retrieve our finances. We retrieve our time, oh God. Father, we go into the enemy's camp and everything that the enemy has taken from us. We retrieve it in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we are asking you, Lord God, lift us up, oh God. Oh, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says you will raise a standard. Raise a standard, oh God. Set the enemy to flight in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, Lord God, prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemy. Oh, God, we're asking you to bless us with a blessing that is pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Bring men, bring men, bring men. Oh, God, to give into our bosoms in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Oh God, we bless you and we praise you. Oh God, we worship you and we magnify you. Father, we are asking you, Lord God. Oh Father, Lord God, give us the grace, oh God, to obey you. Give us the grace to love you with our whole hearts. Father, the first commandment, oh God, you said we shall love the Lord thy God with all our heart, with all our souls, with all our might, with all our strength. And the second is like the first to love our neighbors as ourselves. Father, we're asking you for great grace to love you. You says, if you love me, then you will obey me. Father, if we truly love you, we will walk in obedience. Father, Lord God, we're asking you to create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us. Oh God, help us to possess the mind of Christ. Oh Father, we're asking you, Lord God, to give us a heart transplant. Take this wicked, stony, hard heart out of us and give us a heart like Jesus. One that's filled with love, love, light and life in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we cover these prayers under the blood of Jesus. We cover the blessings for each and every person under the blood. Father, who can go under the blood and take anything from Jesus? Father, the Bible says that when Daniel prayed, the first day he prayed, you release the answers to his, pr his prayers. You release a blessing unto him. But the prince of Persia intercepted it and delayed it. So right now we cover all our answered prayers all the blessings you have released, we cover them under the blood of Jesus. We ask the Lord Jesus Christ to keep them in safe keeping. Oh, and that they will be released to us all from the spirit realm under the blood of Jesus. So they will not be denied and they certainly cannot be delayed. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We praise you and we worship you. We thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. Because while we were yet sinners, Christ died. We thank you because you have not left us orphan, but you have left us the most powerful 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 presence and power known to mankind in this earth realm in the person of the Holy Ghost. Spirit of the living God, have your way in our life. Spirit of the living God, take absolute control. Spirit of the living God, give us the grace to surrender all to you. All to Jesus, empower us to surrender and all to him, let us freely give. 
Father, we thank you, we bless you. We thank you for this hour. We pray for Choice Radio Station. Father, may you move in a mighty way. When the word go forth, O God, may it go forth with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to bring forth change in lives, to break yokes, to break bondages, to set the captives free, to bring about salvation. In Jesus' mighty precious name we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. You've just listened to Choice Radio Station, where our mantra is, it is your life, it is your salvation, it is your choice. The year is coming to a close, and the Lord has allowed you to live thus far, because he has plans for your life. But tomorrow is owed to none. If you do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, you very well may be living in futility, because tomorrow may not be a chance for you. You do not want to go to hell. There is no purgatory. And life is infinite. It means it's eternal. Once you die here on earth, it's just a transition. In hell, you shall certainly lift up your eyes. So God has sent me to give you this opportunity to die to sin and to die to self and to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Will you not seize this opportunity? It may be the only one you have. Seize it. If you want to be protected, if you want your name to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, if you want to spend eternity with Jesus Christ, then believe in your heart that God sent Jesus Christ to die in your place and he has paid your sin debt in full so you do not have to die and go to hell. Repeat after me. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paid the penalty for my sins. I am willing now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. I commit myself to you, Jesus, and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life to fill me and take absolute control and to help me become the kind of person you want me to be. Thank you, Father, for loving me. In Jesus' mighty, precious name I pray. Amen. If you have just said those prayers, those words, and you believed every word in your heart, you are now welcome into the family of Jesus Christ. Find yourself a Bible-believing church and get into the Word of God and get the Word of God into you. Amen? Amen. This is Jen Harvey with your host for the Hour of Power from the Bible Says International Ministries. Remember, call me, 1-844-99-BIBLE. That is 1-844-99-BIBLE or 1-844-992-4253. Once more, thank you for joining me. Until we meet next week, Friday, same time, same place, may the peace presence, power, purpose, provisions, protection, providence, and promises of God rest and abide permanently with you is my prayer. In Jesus' name, beloved, go forth and thrive.